Matt Davis has been an editorial cartoonist for Journal News in New York since 1993. Uh, he joined uh, uh, the Journal News after freelancing for various publications. He was born in London, as you may have an idea here. Moved with his family to the U.S. at 17 years old in 1983. He studied fine art and illustration at the Savannah College of Art and Design in Georgia and the School of Visual Arts in New York. His drawings have appeared in numerous publications, including the New York Times, Washington Post, Los Angeles Times, USA Today, featured on CNN. As he mentioned tonight, uh, he was painting the ceiling at home one day, uh, practicing Michelangelo, I guess. But uh, in any case, the, uh, the, right, the Sunday show with Sam Donaldson and Cokie Roberts and me came on, and Sam Donaldson said, well, look, look at this cartoon by Matt Davis over here. And I think he said Davies. Uh, and uh, he commented on it, and I commented on it, and he said his day was made. And he said, no, anytime you have a chance to mention an editorial cartoonist's name on TV, uh, do it. They appreciate it. So I, I will remember that, all means. But Matt, it's great to be able to do more than mention your name tonight. Uh, after all the other honors that you have gotten, uh, it is my pleasure to pull out this check and to present this to you as well as we have a, uh, a, a lovely, uh, sorry, it's over, uh, here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, the first Herb Block Trophy. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is, um, step on over here, Matt. This is my, this is, you will not drop it. Not bad, huh? This is my first chance to see it. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> this is my first chance to see it, too. We've been going over prototypes and uh, models of it. Thank you. It's lovely. Matt was chosen from a field of 64 prominent artists and uh, very well deserved. I think um, uh, one person described uh, the reason why he deserves this very well was Tom Tolles, who was here tonight. Uh, and he said, what impresses me is how he has found within his drawing vocabulary a very unique and very aggressive drawing style. I mean aggressive both in terms of content, but particularly in terms of visuals. It pushes his style and the images to be instantly identifiable as his. They're more engaging and funny just to look at. Matt Davis, congratulations. Can I go now? I was, I was going to say, you forgot something. You may keep the money. <laughs> now, now I can go. <laughs> you didn't think I wasn't going to write this down, did you? I'm very, a little bit nervous. Um, before I start, actually, um, my, um, there is something that I promised I would do. My three-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Severin, who's sitting over there, made me promise that I would tell everybody here that she draws cartoons, too. So <laughs> keep a promise. <laughs> She'll probably be here in 20 years up here, I hope. <clears throat> I, was, I was very excited when Frank Soboda called me back in February <clears throat> to tell me that I was to be awarded the inaugural Herblock Prize. In the uh, ensuing conversation, he confessed that he had been concerned as to the precedent uh, that a first winner would set for the prize and its reputation. <clears throat> so the precedent that I will now dutifully set is that all winners must be really bad public speakers. <laughs> okay. You guys are off the hook. Um, this, this really, this is an incredible uh, honor to be standing up here right now. I think this is a very important time to be a political cartoonist. Um, it makes me very nervous that what used to air on vindictive right-wing call-in radio programs during the Clinton years now passes for um, administration policy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I feel privileged to be in a position to comment about it on some of the nation's newspaper editorial pages. I might catch a little flack for it, <clears throat> but I know that one day I will look back at this time in history and be gratified to see that I didn't spend a whole lot of time doing cartoons about Martha Stewart. <laughs> Which, of course, makes me receiving a prize name for her block, <clears throat> who is credited with coining the term McCarthyism, especially meaningful to me. First, 
uh, thanks, mom and dad, <laughs> for graciously not kicking me out of your basement when, as a freshly minted college dropout, I told you that I was going to become an editorial cartoonist. <laughs> it's always a good one to drop on your parents. Um, they're, they're here tonight, just look for the couple uh, who have the total look of disbelief <laughs> etched upon their faces. Easy to, easy to spot over there. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank my ever patient wife, Lucy, who was able to overlook the fact that she was dating a college dropout who had decided to become an editorial cartoonist. <laughs> Uh, if it wasn't for Lucy, honestly, if it wasn't for Lucy, it's safe to say I simply would not be standing up here right now. Um, truth is, when I draw my cartoons, I draw them for her. <clears throat> uh, I would lo also like to thank my editor, Henry Freeman, who's up there, I just saw him, uh, who has the courage to basically leave me alone. Thank you, Henry. <clears throat> and I'd also like to thank my publisher, Gary Sherlock, um, and I'm not just brown nosing here. I mean, I really am going to thank my publisher, Gary Sherlock. Um, I, I have here a small excerpt from a letter uh, sent to Gary about a month ago by a really uh, nice reader that I'd like to share with you. <clears throat> Dear Mr. Sherlock, in our last telephone conversation, you stated, I hired Matt Davis. I almost said Davies there. Matt Davis. <laughs> to it's when you read it. it looks yeah. It, uh, <laughs> Matt Davis. Uh, to be provocative, Davis is fanatically insensitive, insulting, intolerant, libelous, offensive, and seditious, but not provocative. <laughs> he viciously impugns the reputation of others through vile bias attacks from which he arrogantly expects no response or serious consequences. Mr. Sherlock, you should immediately fire Matt Davis since he is no longer in any sense legitimately provocative and is only severely damaging your personal reputation and destroying the credibility of your newspaper. I hire... Do you hate people who bring babies to these things? Oh, it's mine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I... I hired Matt Davis to be provocative. That sweet music, what sweet music. Um, on, that, on that note, there's plenty of empirical data to indicate that editorial cartoonists are a real pain in the ass. As a result, most, news pub most newspaper publishers uh, don't think enough of their readers to keep us on staff these days. For a couple of bucks, you can just buy a bunch of stuff from a syndicate, then pick and choose the material, so as to avert controversy. Imagine wasting the time trying to find a cartoon that doesn't offend somebody. <clears throat> it's a lot of time you're gonna have to spend doing that. 11 years ago when Gary Sherlock did the unthinkable uh, and actually created a position for a staff editorial cartoonist at his newspaper, there were around, and this is really approximate, 175 staff cartooning positions in the US. Unfortunately, his vision stands in stark contrast to what many other publishers had up their collective sleeves. Now, there's about 80 staff editorial cartooning jobs left. There are even some major newspapers with long traditions of having staff cartoonists who have currently have those positions conspicuously unfilled. Um, it makes me shudder to imagine what the world would be like had the publisher of the Washington Post seen an opportunity to save a few bucks avoid a bit of controversy, and not hire a young Mr. Block. <clears throat> and speaking of whom, uh, I'd like to thank Herb Block himself. His contribution to American editorial cartooning and journalism as a whole uh, is impossible to overestimate. And thankfully, that contribution will continue in, in perpetuity, thanks to the incredible foundation he so generously bequeathed to the world. My, my path did cross with his on several occasions, though I actually only met her once. Um, we were both at a, an Association of American Editorial Cartoonists uh, convention 10 or so years ago, and when I saw him briefly standing alone, <clears throat> I approached this, this industry giant uh, with you know, the trepidation of a young boy meeting the Lone Ranger in person and said something really clever and rehearsed like, 
hey man, I really like your stuff. <laughs> this one. I should have written it down. Uh, maybe, maybe it was my ponytail. I used to have a ponytail. Um, or the fact, it was 10 years ago, okay. Um, or the fact that he had no idea who I was. Or perhaps he could sense that I had only recently moved out of my parents' basement. <laughs> but he looked a tad unsure when he said, um, thanks. I was uh, excited at the prospect of meeting him again back in the spring of 2001 when I was given the Robert F. Kennedy Award for editorial cartooning and he was given an RFK Lifetime Achievement Award the same year. I looked forward to the opportunity to maybe redeem myself in his eyes, uh, but they announced he was not well enough to attend the ceremony and uh, his seat was empty and he died later that year. <clears throat> I indulged myself a little when I found out I'd won this first ever Herb Block Prize by hoping that just maybe it was Herb's way of saying, I like your stuff too, man. <laughs> Thank you. This is really cool.